Welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Thousand Games. I'm your host, Gaming J, and Happy Halloween! Today, we're jumping into the spookiest game that Blizzard and Blizzard North, who are actually two totally different companies, have ever made. It is Diablo, the 1996 classic, which gave rise to the whole Diablo franchise. And we're playing the shareware version! Um, long story... Um, the Diablo game is obviously in the book, Thousand One Games Just Play Before You Die, and I was looking at actually buying the game off GOG, uh, I own a CD somewhere, it's in a box, I have no idea where it is, but I was reading about how hard it is to get Diablo to work on a Windows 10 computer, so I got the shareware version, was trying to get it to work, and it wouldn't work, and finally I got it working, and I kind of thought, you know what? I remember playing the Diablo Shareware Edition back in the day, and the Shareware Edition is kind of interesting because it's limited. You can only play a couple of levels, and I thought, when I make these videos, I can't play the whole game. Why don't we play the Shareware Edition to do kind of something different? So I'm playing Diablo, but I'm playing the Shareware Edition, and I mean, how many Let's Plays of the Shareware Edition of Diablo exist out there? Maybe none. So I kind of thought, this could be a unique contribution. Notice that you can't even watch the opening cinematic for the game without calling a 1-800 number. I mean, you have to have the full version of Diablo. Um, a lot of stuff is locked off in this shareware edition, but it actually makes for the perfect video because it gives us about an hour of gameplay. So, uh, when you hop into the game, you have three classes to choose from. You have Warrior, Rogue, and Sorcerer. There is the Rogue. Um, now, the interesting thing is that uh, these characters, everyone but the warriors, totally locked off. Um, so here are the different stats of the characters. Um, but for instance, if we go and we select Rogue, uh, what we will find is, yeah, once again, uh, we need a 1-800 number. Uh, if we select Sorcerer, yeah, we get basically the same thing. So, yes, we're going to go ahead and we will select Warrior here, because it's the only character that we can play as. And uh, we need a good name. Um, now, I, uh, full disclosure, I'm actually not commenting as I play this live. Um, I actually played this the other day and just recorded all my gameplay because I thought uh, I had a lot to say for Diablo and I didn't want to be playing and talking at the same time. And I thought as a change, I would uh, just sort of narrate back uh, watching my own videos. So uh, I took a while to come up with a name here. And the name I wanted to type in was Jay the Bold. But I kind of did a typo here. And so you can see, I yeah, I, I just typed in Jay the Bald. So we're Jay the Bald. That's our uh, character in Diablo. And you know what? We're okay with that. And here we are in the world of Diablo, more specifically the village of Tristram. Um, the style of Diablo, by the way, is totally awesome. It has this sort of claymation feel to it. Notice how the river is not animated at all. Like, this is 1996. This is one of the early isometric... Uh, I mean, this is a sprite-based game, but the, the graphics were created uh, in 3D. Um, you can't actually talk to anyone, by the way, in the shareware version here. So I forgot just how limited the shareware version was. I have memories of going to a friend's house after school and his parents had two computers and we would sit side by side in their office, both playing Diablo separately. Uh, but uh, you know, you can like buy healing potions and stuff, but there's a lot you can't do in the shareware edition here. But uh, I'm, I'm really excited by the way that we are playing the shareware edition. Again, I feel like it's something unique we can contribute to the uh, YouTube scene. Now, I don't know how many full playthroughs of the shareware ex edition exist out there, if any. So, uh, anyway, I'm checking my weapons here, looking at gold pieces and so on. But, uh, oh, here's one character you can talk to. All was peaceful until the Dark Riders came and destroyed our village. Many were cut down where they stood, and those who took up arms were slain or, or dragged away to become slaves, or worse. The church at the edge of town has been desecrated and is being used for dark rituals. The screams that echo in the night are inhuman, but some of our townsfolk may yet survive. Follow the path that lies between my tavern and the blacksmith's shop to find the church and save who you can. Perhaps I can tell you more if we speak again. Good luck. There we go. There's the, the intro story. It's kind of interesting that, uh, oh, if you talk to him, you just get the same story. Uh, here's the character screen, by the way, and there I am, Jay the Bald. 
Um, but yes, the backstory for this game is basically like an evil, there's an evil church at the edge of town and in it are just, just levels and levels and levels of monsters and demons and stuff. I'm checking out all, all the controls here for a second here. I'm going to try and talk to some people, wow. see if I can talk to anyone, but uh, I remember this part. I could not talk to anyone. Um, so yes, moral of the story, don't let evil churches set up shop on the edge of town. But yeah, do you guys... So I, I've talked about shareware many times on my channel. Um, and it's one of those things that really doesn't sort of exist anymore, the shareware model. But do you guys, anyone watching, did you back in the day get shareware versions of like Duke 3D or Commander Keen or Diablo or whatever? And did you play the same levels over and over again? Because it was all you had? I 100% did that as a kid, and I have so many fond memories of playing shareware editions uh, of video games, uh, you know, because, you know, when you're a kid, you don't have a lot of spare cash. You know, I, I couldn't fork up money to buy the full Commander Keen, so I just played the shareware episode, which was good enough for me. Um, but yeah, anyway, into the dungeon. So here's the, the main meat and potatoes of Diablo. You basically get to hack and slash and destroy barrels and pick up clubs and billy sticks and all sorts of stuff. Um, of course this game is procedurally generated, so every time you play the game, every time you enter a dungeon... Um, oh yeah, and here I'm experimenting uh, with the controls. Um, every time you enter a dungeon, it's totally new layout, so you never know what you're going to find. Um, you encounter totally different things when you play through differently. Um, this, by the way, is one of the main moves of Diablo. You can hold shift and click, and rather than walking like my guy's doing right now, you'll stand in place and swing. If you are a melee character, you need that, because if you don't hold the shift, you will basically sometimes walk into a room and get surrounded by enemies and then die. And that's not a good thing. Um, anyway, I'm kind of exploring the church here. I got my auto map on to help guide me. Sometimes it's hard to see where doors are and stuff, so you need that auto map. If I were playing this for real, I probably would have left the auto map on the whole time. But because I want things to be clear for you guys, I, uh, <laughs> I keep turning it off. I love this move. It's like all the bad guys are on the other side of the wall. I'm just standing in front of the door being like, all right, if you guys get hit, it's your own fault. Yeah, anyway. Um, so, by the way, yeah, I'm playing the shareware edition of Diablo here. I just want to say up front, I 100% think that if you are interested in Diablo, you should totally get the game. It is on GOG. You get Diablo and the Hellfire edition for like 10 bucks. Uh, I'm sure it will go on sale by the summer if 10 bucks is too steep for you. But it's it's a great game that holds up. I mean, I don't have to to wait till the end of the video to tell you guys that. Um, but, uh, you know, for us, we're looking at the shareware edition. I mean, the other thing that was kind of cool about shareware editions of games is often they were earlier builds of games. So, I mean, you saw on the title screen, I was playing version 1.0. Uh, version 1.9 is the most up-to-date version of uh, Diablo uh, that you would get if you bought it off GOG. But even the retail copy of Diablo um, might have been a little different from the shareware edition back when the shareware edition first hit the scene. I think that the way Blizzard worked around the time of uh, Diablo and StarCraft is if you bought Diablo, you could install the full game and you would need the CD to play the full game. I'm just picking up potions and stuff here. I love I love the point and click interface and the, the catacombs and the monsters and everything. Uh, I just I, I love the claymation style of the graphics. I mean, I know they're technically not claymation, but I just freaking love it. I loved everything claymation as a kid. Uh, but yes, basically, if you have the CD of the game in your computer, I'm checking on my skills too. Apparently I can repair an item, whatever that means. I think I figured it out a little later. I'm um, checking out some of the stuff that I picked up. I think the Falchion, or the Falchion, whatever you call it, does uh, more damage to my sword, so I'm gonna swap it out there. And I think these clubs kinda suck. I think I throw them away at some point because I need inventory space. Um, but yeah, so you could ins you could install the game, and if you had the CD, you'd play the full version. But if you didn't have the CD, and you'd play the shareware edition, and you could install the game on multiple computers. And these shareware editions that needed the CD but would play in shareware mode, we didn't have the CD, were called spawn editions. And the reason that Blizzard did this is so that you could play with one CD, like up to four computers multiplayer on a local network. And they did this with StarCraft too. There was a spawn edition for StarCraft. And this I always thought was so cool. So one of the big lessons that Blizzard learned... Oh, I just leveled up. I just leveled up. 
Uh, I think I'm going to check that in a second. I'm checking my potions. I'm just going to, I think, kill this dude here. This little uh, goblin guy. I like how he just turned into a pile of goo as you kill him. Um, all right, let's level up here. What am I going to do? What am I going to spend my money on? I have five points to distribute. can distribute them in any of these abilities. I think I go for strength because that is one of the main ones you want as a fighter. And then I decide to mix it up. A bit of vitality. Uh, do I do some dexterity? No, I go all strength. Yes. I mean, my muscles are growing as I pummel those little goblins into piles of mush. Um, but a big lesson the Blizzard learned from the Warcraft days um, was that people liked real-time strategy and like real-time controls, and they liked multiplayer. And so uh, this game, Diablo, was actually developed by a company called Condor. Oh, I, I'm checking out a bow here, by the way, in case you want to see what ranged weaponry are like. So again, if you hold shift and click, you'll just shoot. And uh, obviously the ranged weapon is good for killing guys at a distance. The, uh, the rogue, the female rogue, is actually better with the bow than the archer. But anyone can use anything, which is what I kind of like about Diablo. As long as you have the right stats, it doesn't matter if you're the right class. Although I think there are class-specific stuff later in the game or else in the sequels. Anyway, we're a fighter. We're not going to use the bow. Um, but yeah, so Diablo was being developed by a company called Condor, and Condor went around to different publishers trying to get funding for uh, an RPG, this claymation-style RPG they wanted to create, and publishers literally told them RPGs are dead, you know, it's never going to be a success. And then they went to Blizzard, and Blizzard was kind of interested, but they said, we have two requests if we're going to do this for you. One is the game has to be real time and two is the game has to have multiplayer because they saw that real time and multiplayer were big reasons why people liked Warcraft. Um, and so because of that Diablo changed from a turn based game which probably would have been more like Fallout given the isometric graphics and stuff and it became a uh, oh yeah here I'm in the door. <laughs> if you get hit I'm just going to stand here and swing and if you get hit it's your own fault. Um but yes, uh, Diablo became Diablo, you know, like the real-time strategy element to Diablo is a big thing that sort of separated Diablo from the rest of the herd when it first came out. So yeah, uh, really made it stand out, really made it a good game, uh, and now I am over-encumbered with stuff. Oh, Skeleton Captain, oh, I just slaughtered him. Notice, by the way, when I hover over enemies, it tells me their name. Here's, an in here's another kind of interesting thing about Diablo that I, I noticed later on. I'll try and point it out later, but if I forget, you guys can uh, you guys can just notice silently on your own. But when you hover over enemies, it tells you what kind of enemy it is. So let me see if I can find... There's an enemy. Fallen one. I've killed 11 fallen ones. 12 now. This guy will be 13. I think when you kill like 20 of them or 30 of them, I think that just uh, increased my dexterity, by the way. Those little... Uh, those little altars. I didn't know what they did at the time, but I'm pretty sure, at, in retrospect, they were updating my stats. But uh, as you kill more enemies of a certain type, your knowledge of them increases. Um, so eventually, when, I think when you kill 20 or 30 of them, you start to learn, are they immune to different kinds of magics? Um, eventually, you start to learn how many hit points they have and how much damage they do. So rather than just seeing the name when you hover over them, you actually get some statistics and information about them. I totally forgot that Diablo did that on throwing away clubs because they're useless and I need inventory space. Um, I totally forgot Diablo did that, but that's so neat. I like that. That idea that, you know, you can learn about enemies by having various encounters with them. So I'm, I'm, I, I am excited. I didn't really notice this all that, this much when I was actually playing the game. But I'm excited as, a, as an active observer now to see, um, as we kill more enemies, eventually we will come to understand the enemies, which is such a such a neat concept, I think. Um, oh, yeah, okay, I just killed that guy, and very briefly it said no magical resistances. As he died. So it's like, as he died, he sort of was like, by the way, I'm not immune to magic! See, immune to magic. There you go. So once you kill 15, you learn something. I know when you kill 30, I think you figure out how many hit points they have or how much damage they do. Um, I'm not sure if you learn anything else beyond that. Um, because I don't know if I kill more than 30 of any particular enemy type. But uh, yeah, definitely you end up learning a little bit more about them, which is so really, really cool. 
Um, by the way, as you go through different levels, and we will see this on the later levels, you pretty much fight the same bad guys. They just are colored differently. Like it's totally a palette swap, um, which you, is kind of cheap. But at the same time, you know, in the context of 1996, it was kind of like the best they could do. And honestly, it doesn't really get that stale. Uh, but certainly the later Diablo games were more... Uh, I'm just comparing helmets here. Caps, trying to see which one has the most armor. Um, but certainly in uh, later Diablo games, uh, there was a lot more variety in terms of enemies and environments and so on. I mean, I still think this first game holds up remarkably well. There's like no way to increase my inventory. Man, your inventory is so small in this game. It's crazy. All right, more muscles. Give me muscles. What else? Dexterity. I'm going to be an agile, muscly man. It's interesting how, like, all your stats can just increase. Like, an in actual bodybuilding, if you really worked on your strength, eventually your maneuverability would decrease. But in RPGs, it's like you can just become more muscular and more acrobatic. Like, imagine Arnold Schwarzenegger at his peak back in the day uh, when he was, like, super strong. Imagine him, like, also, like, flipping around like a world-class, you know, acrobat. That's what, that's what RPGs teach you is possible. Um, anyway, now the fun part of Diablo, you've cleared out a level and you need to use the map to find your way uh, back out. Or you could find a part of the dungeon you haven't explored. So this is why the, the sort of auto map thing was just so important. Um, I think I was just sort of briefly checking how much experience I had and what level I was. Jay the Bald. Imagine you were a character whose nickname was the Bald, like... I mean, I, I assume you would be bald, or else you'd have, like, a lush head of hair, and it's, like, some sort of, like, meta joke. Immune to magic. Immune to magic. Oh, I see. So they cannot be polymorphed into sheep or other such things. Um, it's, har it's hard to fully, I think, appreciate how cool this game was back when it came out, personally. Again, you know, me and my friend uh, were just blown away by this game. My friend in high school. And... So much so that we played, we, we replayed the Shareware Edition over and over and over again, you know. We were just, like, so into it. Um, and the interesting thing about this game is, like, after you beat it, like, after you beat the two levels even, but if you had the full version, after you beat the whole game, you can start a new game with the same character, and then you come back to level one, and you're this beefed-out rock star, like a level 30 warrior, and you can just crush all the enemies. I think if you play it on harder difficulties, the enemies get tougher and tougher, so they kind of scale with you. Uh, but you get to replay the... You know, the game doesn't have to end. It doesn't have to end. Which actually means this is like, you know... This this game is just designed to be crack. It's designed to be addictive. I mean, look at the gameplay. The gameplay, honestly, is actually not that complex. It's interesting, because it's a real-time strategy game. But it's also a little slower-paced and relaxed. I mean, things get chaotic on the later levels. You know, don't get me wrong. But it's like, even though it's real time, it's not overwhelming. You don't have to have like an APM of like, you know, a thousand moves a second. Uh, APM is actions per minute, by the way, if you don't know. They use it to measure how many clicks of the mouse and uh, keyboard button presses you do in a minute. But yeah, you don't have to be like going nutso like a Korean pro. Oh, here we go. I'm just going to swing this sword. And if you guys get killed, it's your own fault. Just walk to me. Yes, there we go. You just stand in place swinging. That's how it's done, folks. That's how it's done. Too much baggage. Um, oh, I found a book. I definitely want that book. So I think I'm going to throw away a cap or something. I'm like looking, like what's the least valuable thing? Now, what is this book of healing? So the books in Diablo, you can read them and you will permanently learn spells and abilities. And again, even though I'm not a sorcerer, I can learn that spell. I just need a magic level of 17. I think I'm at like 12 or 10 right now. So I think it becomes one of my goals to try and level up my magic. So that we can actually, uh, you know, level up things. See, now I know these guys are not resistant to magical uh, anything. Also, these guys are interesting. They have interesting AI. When they're near you and someone is killed, like one of their allies is killed, they all flee. So if you notice, they keep running away. See those guys in the corner in the top left? They, they totally scattered. And I kill this guy, and the other guy's just like, forget it! And then we slaughter him. Uh, they kind of remind me of the, of the grunts in Halo, because they were also very cowardly. If you killed... Like the elite or the brute that was with the grunts, they would all flee. Um, and you know what? Blizzard has a very Bungie feel to them, I, I would say. You know, I, Bungie came out of the Mac uh, gaming scene, and I feel like their games feel Mac y 
in that they are very clean and polished and simple yet satisfying and that's sort of the mo for macs how they they are how their operating system looks like i'm not a mac guy and personally i would never spend the amount of money apple wants for their mac products i think it's a ripoff just buy a pc it's far cheaper but um th they do have sort of an aesthetic style to them so i appreciate that um i think i've cleared this level out by the way um and i feel like blizzard games are the same they're like very polished tight experiences so uh yeah i'm just looking around for any any chests or anything that i might have forgotten um the book by the way the thousand and one games you must play before you die book okay get this the intro for this game um, oh, by the way, I'm going back up to town because I'm loaded up with gear. We got to sell some stuff. Also, I kind of did not explore town very much when I first started this game. I want to walk around and see what else there is to see. Um, but yeah, the book introduces this game by talking about Microsoft Excel and talking about how just clicking on an Excel document is not very interesting. But that's basically what Diablo is. But Blizzard made it into like it's it's introducing Diablo by comparing it to boring spreadsheet work. I don't even know where to begin with that. Uh, you know, uh, the book 100% needed to include Diablo. I I'm so happy they did. I mean, if they didn't, I would say that's a huge oversight. But uh, hey, look, a peg leg boy, Wirt, and he has something to say. What have you got? 2,700 gold. Who can afford that? Plus nine to dexterity. I don't even need it. Uh, and you can't talk to him. Um, yeah, so I, I, I don't know. The, the person who wrote the intro to Diablo in the Thousand One Games book, let me just say that, I mean, there was a lot of creative ways you could have introduced Diablo. I don't know if bringing up Microsoft Excel is relevant or I don't know. Um, I get what they're saying, though. We're like, this game... You know, it's it's very, in some ways, it's very shallow. You know, you're just clicking on enemies and they die. You know, it's like a numbers game. If you have the right stats, they die. You pick up items and you just look at their stats and you compare it to, like, the stats of the things you have. And you're, just, you're basically building a character through numbers. But honestly, isn't that all RPGs? Like, I know, oh, uh, Kane here will identify things for you, but I don't think we have anything worth identifying. Not for 100 gold, anyway. Um, but yeah, isn't that most RPGs? They're just a big stats game. Kind of fell drinking peace. <laughs> Farnum the drunk. Uh, I wonder what he says in the real game. I totally forget. Uh, anyway, just exploring this this non-flowing river. I love how everything is just static. There's absolutely no animation, except in the main character and a little bit in the NPCs. They move around a little. All right, let's sell all our crap and get some money. Yeah, let's just... Wait, what? Uh, I think... Yeah, clubs are kind of useless. So, I didn't know this, but apparently, like, maces and clubs do bonus damage against undead. It's like 50% bonus damage. I don't know if I ever knew that, but I just found it out right before today. So, even back when I was playing uh, yesterday, I didn't actually really know this. But, anyway, we just sold all our stuff. I'm holding on to... This, uh, that staff that's red there. Uh, I'm checking out my spells, by the way, again. But I'm holding on to that staff because if I upgrade my magic, I can use it. And it's a staff of fireball. And I showed you the bow briefly. We've been sticking with these melee weapons. I'm gonna repair my sword here. So the warrior starts with a repair skill. That's what I have equipped down the bottom right. When I right click, it turns to a hammer and I can repair the durability of my cap, but it takes away the maximum durability, so. Again, a stats number game. You just run the durability oh, almost to zero, then repair things. We'll just sell this extra cap. Uh, but yes, you've seen a bow. I kind of want to show you a wizard staff just so you can see a fireball in action. Um, all the stuff he's got here. I'm pretty sure we don't want any of it. It's too expensive. Again, you can replay this game with the same characters. You could level them up, get a bunch of gold, then come back in, and then you can afford this stuff. But in the meantime, it kind of feels like there's nothing. I mean, I could just get all this stuff in the dungeon if I'm persistent enough. So there's really not a point to buying too much of this. Um, this game had an expansion. Uh, there was an expansion called the Hellfire expansion, which was actually not designed by Blizzard. It was designed by uh, Sierra. Yes, the people who make King's Quest, Space Quest, 
All that fun what stuff. They actually made an expansion for this. And it was actually like a really well-renowned expansion. It added a new class, which was a monk who was a hand-to-hand -hand fighter. Um, oh, do I buy a cape here? I think I buy a cape here. Yeah, I'm like, you know what? You can't take the gold with you. Might as well buy it. And boom, there you go. Um, yes, yeah, so the expansion added like new levels and a new boss. Um, new bosses, in fact, new quests and all that, Greetings and it added a new class. It added the monk. Um, apparently, there was the barbarian and the bard. They were two other classes that were Hello, supposed to be friend. added in in the expansion, um, but they, uh, they, they were never finished. I guess the expansion had to ship, and they weren't quite done. They were like, whatever, ship it out as is. Um, I'm just checking the magic requirements here. So I'm like, okay, my next quest is to get some magical abilities so I can like level up. Uh, my, uh, I can actually use some of this stuff. So next time I level up, I'm gonna put it, dump it all into magic. Um, but yeah, the, the, um, I totally lost my train of thought. Hellfire expansion. Oh yeah, they had, they had extra classes that were hidden in the game code that they were working on that just were not ready by the time the game launched. And they were like, whatever, just, uh, ship it out as is, I guess. So I wonder if those were abandoned or if they just ran out of time. I don't know. Anyway, we're going to go back into the dungeon here. Now, eventually you get uh, Scrolls of Town Portal, and you can just teleport into town. I didn't have one yet, so I was forced to uh, manually walk to town. But I think that is the one and only time that I have to do that. Because once we go down to level 2, we're going to find some scrolls. And uh, in future, we're just going to be able to teleport. So now the floor is red, as you can see, which means we're in a more sinister part of the cathedral. This church, by the way, is enormous. You know, the church uh, on the on the surface level, I'm like setting up my potions. So blue is mana, red is health. Since I don't cast any spells, I just need health potions. So might as well have them all handy. If you press one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, or eight, you will instantly drink a potion and heal health. Um, it happens instantly. So it's like a quick key for healing. Um, so it's good to set all that stuff up ahead of time. Not that we're going to encounter too many difficult fights down here, but better safe than sorry, you know? Uh, so I'm just opening these sarcophaguses. But yeah, this is an enormous church. If you ever went into a church this big... Um, oh, there's the stairways down to level 3 already, to the right there. Those were some uh, bone archers. Some skeleton archers. Look at all these guys trapped in jail. I'm going to let you out. Come on, who wants some? I like how they're just, like, standing there watching me slaughter, you know, uh, cap corpse captain after corpse captain. And the guy behind him is like, well, maybe I'll be successful. Why don't I walk up there? I'll see if this works. Now, they are, they are hitting me, but I'm totally killing them. When you level up, by the way, notice you get full, uh, full life and full mana. Um, I think when I first leveled up, I was getting really low on health, and I was debating, uh, should I use some... Uh, health potions and I ended up putting it off and I leveled up just before I died So if you go back and watch to where I leveled up to level two You'll notice I was really low in health before I leveled But the reason I didn't use any potions is I was just waiting to get full health when I leveled anyway We've got our trusty fire staff All right, let's test this puppy out ah, Fireball we missed we hit one hit kills with the fireball. Yes. Oh, we missed again kill him Thank you so yeah, it's it's basically just a ranged attack, but obviously magical. So like, whereas the archer shoots arrows, we shoot fireballs. Uh, that's... I don't know what that did. I guess it restored all my mana. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, like, I think personally I was always in favor of like the warrior and stuff. I think I did play this game as the rogue. I don't think I ever really played it as the sorcerer or not. I don't fully remember. There's another staff. Let's see. Not identified. Uh, we can do this. We have a scroll of identity. Let's just use it. Plus one to magic. What a crappy staff. We're not using that crap. Um, I'd rather have a staff that itself shoots fireballs. Now, the staff of fireballs will run out eventually. You can also uh, clobber guys with it. Blah! I like how I close the door behind me. No one's escaping. You're locked in here with me. Um, but the staff of fireballs will run out. You, uh, 
Here, I experiment with, I'm like, oh, you can close doors? This is me discovering that you can close doors. I was so fascinated by that. Also, I totally left an axe on the ground over there. What's wrong with me? Just walking away from it. All right, I guess I didn't want the axe. Uh, we'll get that later, maybe. Um, I do use an axe before today's video is over. Um, having a ranged weapon is pretty cool, I will, I will say, but I don't know. I just always preferred the melee guys. Even in Diablo 2, I preferred the Barbarian, who was, you know, they didn't have a warrior, it was a Barbarian. Um, I just like the idea of, like, a, a hulked-out Arnold Schwarzenegger dude in full armor uh, with, like, you know, dual-wielding axes or something, or having some giant sword. That is, like, a, an RPG champion in my mind. Oh, God, there's guys everywhere. I'm kind of actually getting surrounded here. And what you do is you lead them to a choke point in Diablo when you're getting surrounded. That's a little uh, gaming J tip. The early levels, by the way, here take place in like a catacomb or like a maze. Again, in this giant cathedral. I don't know any cathedral in real life that is anywhere near as big as uh, the cathedral is. Next to this tiny little town of Tristram. Pro tip, when you build a town next to a giant evil cathedral, the town may not be long for this world. Um, but the later levels actually move to caves and catacombs and eventually you go to like hell and stuff. And so... The worlds, the, the dungeons are procedurally generated. I think I'm comparing the robe versus the cape. <clears throat> and I make the decision to switch back to uh, a sword here. There we go. Get my, my shield. I'm like, you know what? We saw the staff. We've seen the bow and arrow. It's time to go back to our roots. The cape of health, yeah, it gives me minus one damage from enemies, but does not have as much armor. So might as well wear a robe. Um, in Diablo 1, of course, when you put on armor and stuff, you do not, your character model doesn't really change. In the later Diablos, it does. So it's more satisfying to wear different stuff because your guy can start to look cooler. But I'm running around in a bathrobe with a sword and a shield, <laughs> killing people. It's like, uh, it's like I'm killing them on like a lazy Sunday, you know? Uh, anyway. Uh, what was I talking about? I totally got distracted here. Lazy Sunday, bathrobe. Killing people. Oh, the later levels are catacombs and stuff. And the layout of the levels is actually much less... Uh, it's, it's not sort of rooms and corridors. It's like big open areas with like sort of sprawling terrain. So it's not as if you're just fighting through a cathedral for 20 or 30 or... I forget even how many levels there are. Uh, but there, there's some variety. Oh, I found a cloak. Armor 4. You know what, I decided it's unidentified, but we're going to wear it, because who knows, maybe it has some magical benefits. Plus, it felt weird killing guys in my bathrobe. Um, it just felt like I was exposing myself, you know, like I, I was just sort of leaving not enough to the imagination. <laughs> leaving nothing to the imagination, in fact. If you see a guy come into a dungeon to kill you, and you're a monster, and he's like, he's, you know, he's, he's wielding a sword and shield, but he's just in a bathrobe and, like, slippers... You should be scared, because that is a man with no fear. And I know you're a hideous monster, but if I were a hideous monster, I would still not want to get killed. So I'm just saying. Um, this rotting carcass gives me a bit of trouble. Let's slaughter some bats, also known as fiends. We don't know much about them yet. How much experience do I... Uh, I think I was just checking my experience there, seeing how much I needed before I would level up again. This jerk's just been pelting me with arrows the whole time. One hit kill. He's so weak. Uh, that's why they trained him to be a skeleton archer. All right, here's the blue version of the uh, goblin guys. Same AI. When you kill one, they all scatter. Uh, they're a little tougher because they're blue. But, uh, yeah, you can totally see. Uh, they basically just pallet swap enemies. And that's how they uh, come up with new monsters and stuff for people to fight. So here I'm trying to lure enemies out because... I'm so close to leveling up. I need like 300 more experience. I don't want to use a potion, but there are like archers shooting at me and stuff. So I have to be, I have to be careful. I'm sort of like, how many more guys do I have to kill? Like one, two, come on. I'm trying to like go around the corner here so the archers won't actually get me. I think this guy almost gets me there. I checked my experience again. I'm like 89 points away. I'm so close. I actually have more health than it looks like. Uh, I have like 40% health, so I think I'm, I'm totally fine, but boom, there we go, full health. That's how you do it in Diablo. Always try and level up when you're low on health, uh, because, I mean, it's an efficient way to make sure that uh, 
that uh, you're not wasting potions. Dude, look at these stinking archers. Just, just like four or five of them. No, three of them even. Just pelting me from a distance. You guys die now. You die now. What do you got? A cape? I don't want it. All right, there's a sweet axe over here. I'm going to take it, and I believe I'm going to equip it. And uh, it's axe clobbering time. Like, forget about that staff of magic. It sucks. Let's go ahead, and the axe does more damage. Uh, a little bit. 2 to 10 versus 4 to 9. Actually, on average, the axe probably comes out behind. But we haven't seen an axe yet, and it's two-handed. So whatever. You can actually look at your stats here and see, like, your chance of hitting and all that. Let me get rid of those menus, and there we go. Look at that. I could chop wood with this stuff. Split some skulls. Let's go ahead and get our monster on. Um, yeah. So Diablo... Uh, in the world of Diablo, by the way, the backstory is basically that you live in a world where angels and demons have basically been at war. Like, heaven and hell has been at war. And uh, I think Diablo is one of the three prime evils. It's like Diablo, Mephisto, and Baal. Those are uh, the three brothers. And Diablo, I think, is the worst. I mean, Diablo is obviously supposed to be the devil. But just, so, you know, sort of to appease... Uh, conservative Christian groups and to make sure their game didn't get boycotted rather than calling him Satan They called him Diablo, which guess what is just isn't that just Spanish for the devil? <laughs> so I don't know. I guess they snuck one by uh, Snuck one by a uh, conservative America there, but I don't I don't remember Parent groups or whatever complaining about Diablo back. Maybe I just wasn't paying attention I feel like nowadays if you made a game called Satan or El Diablo um, you... Actually, no, I take it back. I was gonna say you, you'd get some ire, but you know what? Like, they make movies and stuff about, like, you know, uh, like, The Nun and stuff, and, like, nobody complains. I don't know. So, whatever. I guess... I guess at a certain point, like, uh, you know, mom groups just sort of are like, ah, whatever. Kids are playing Satan games, you know? They're like, there's nothing we can do about it. There's nothing we can do. A far cry from what they did in the 80s, right? Like, in the 80s, people were like, you're playing a game called Dungeons and Dragons, and in the game somewhere they mention a demon. You're worshiping Satan, you know? Like, they were like, the game wasn't called Demons and Satan, it was called Dungeons and Dragons. And they were like, you're, you're doing the devil's work, you know? You're becoming a Satanist. Nowadays, you make a game literally called The Devil in Spanish, and nobody cares. Nobody cares. So we've come a long way, baby. It's not the 80s anymore. Um, but I, I never got why why parent groups were so concerned about RPGs, you know um, it, I think it's one of those things that like I mean you look historically parent groups like hate all video games and stuff Not they don't hate them, but it's like they get concerned about all this stuff stuff. They've never played um, I would not be surprised if when Minecraft first showed up on the scene There were some parent groups being like Minecraft is turning our, our children to the devil Meanwhile, Minecraft is now considered, like, as harmless as Lego and actually good for your, like, cognitive development. So they're, like, having kids play Minecraft in school. But I guarantee you, some parent out there, when Minecraft came out, was like, Minecraft is, like, corrupting the youth. Um, anyway, we found another book. See, the game, this, this game doesn't teach you about devil worship. It teaches you to read. It teaches you that books are valuable and teach you awesome skills. That, uh, if that is not a Saturday morning cartoon moral... At the end, you know, I don't know what is. Let's slaughter these guys. I really like the axe. I know it makes me more vulnerable because I don't have a uh, shield. But I really, really like the axe. Um, so, by the way, uh, I, I already mentioned that uh, this game was actually not developed by Blizzard, but a company called Condor. Condor actually uh, was approaching many develop many publishers, as I said, looking for someone to publish this this game that they wanted to make. And Blizzard was getting into publishing, and they were like, you know what, we like the sound of what you guys are, are, want to do, so they agreed to publish their game. But as the development of Diablo went on, Blizzard started to like it more and more, to the point where they just bought Condor. And they renamed the studio Blizzard North. So Blizzard North is a different company than the original Blizzard. And actually, um, Blizzard North shut down... I think they shut down after Diablo 2. Um, and that's why Diablo 3 was so delayed. And actually, if you look at, like, 
early designs for Diablo 3, they were actually quite different than the game that we ultimately got because Condor, you know, Blizzard North was shut down, employees were fired, uh, ones who wanted to move south to the Blizzard main offices were allowed to do so, and then Blizzard basically restarted Diablo. So, I, I like, I've always kind of felt like, you know, Warcraft and Starcraft and Hearthstone and World of Warcraft, they all feel very similar to each other, like they exist in the same world. Diablo has always felt a little different. It's always been the Blizzard game. Oh, I think the axe is knocking that zombie back, actually. So I think the axe has, like, another benefit where it can, like, knock enemies back, which is kind of cool. Um, but Diablo has always felt different from other Blizzard games with a slightly different style. And I think it's also felt a little bit like the stepchild of the family. Where, like, I, I know, for instance, people were really excited that Blizzard was going to announce Diablo 4 a while back. And they just announced a Diablo uh, Android mobile game. And people, like, hated that. And people were like, are you freaking kidding me? So I feel like Diablo has not gotten the same amount of love as the other, uh, you know, Blizzard IPs by Blizzard, but uh, maybe that's just my own perceptions. But uh, yeah, it's kind of interesting to think that like this this wasn't developed by the guys who made Warcraft or Starcraft or any of those games that, that you love. It was a totally different group of people, and it was just branded as a Blizzard game. I mean, Blizzard has in, had input and made recommendations and so on, um, but it's like, you know, the original creators of Warcraft, Not this chance. isn't something they invented. Anyway, here's the limit of our shareware edition. Uh, when I was playing this, by the way, I had no idea how far we could go. Uh, early on in the game, there is... Oh, there's my uh, town portal, by the way. I'm like, all right, well, if I, can't go, if I can't go forward, I might as well go back. So there you go. So you can teleport to town very easily. I love just the look of my guy carrying that axe. But I thought the shareware edition would at least let us get to the first boss, which was the Butcher, if I remember correctly. Oh, He's sort of like some overlord fire. demon... Um, and he actually looks pretty crazy, but like this is as far as you can go. This is this is the Diablo shareware edition. We've seen the whole thing. Um, you can sell some things and buy some things, but uh, basically, I have not yet leveled up enough to read these books, and I'm sort of experimenting with my spells, figuring out what can I possibly do. And this is where I make the decision that, uh, you know what, I'm going to try and hop back in and take a little bit more of a look at this game by seeing what happens when you uh, restart the game. So Cloak of the Fox, 10, 15 hit points, who cares? Um, that seems like a, a pretty boring thing. And there's really not much more to do here. All right, so let's save our game and then start a new one. So... As you can see here, Jay the Bald, Jay the Bald, God, I can't believe I typoed that, Jay the Bold, maybe it's like with an accent, Jay the Bald, um, it's just with like a heavy Scottish accent, by the way, I don't know what happened to the music, it just totally cut off here for some reason, so we're walking around in eerie silence, just insert your favorite Halloween soundtrack here, so some kind of like eerie, you know, Blair Witch atmospheric music or the Monster Mash, whatever you care. Like I even go and I'm like, what? Where's the sound? I'm, I'm very confused, but it's nowhere to be found. Before I go into the uh, cathedral, though, I think I decided to do a little exploring because I seem to remember there are some other sort of things here. There's like a graveyard and stuff. There's a crypt over there to the right. And I think later in the game, there's like a side mission that takes you in there. So there are some places to explore. There's cows, by the way. Uh, I think one of the, the famous cheat codes in Diablo or Diablo 2 or Warcraft was something like there is no cow level because there was some kind of rumor that I think in Diablo 1, there's a secret cow level. And in Diablo 2, they actually inserted a secret cow level where a bunch of cows will basically be armed with axes and chase you around and stuff. Um, here's the church, by the way, the evil cathedral from the outside. It doesn't look so big, right? But it is so massive. First of all, it must take up the entire town. Second of all, it goes down like like 50 floors. Uh, but anyway, the music Sanctity begins again. Has been and as you can see, we're back on level one, and it's a totally different layout. So this is what I mean when I say procedurally generated. Um, I think we decide to skip right down. Ooh, we leveled up. We leveled up. Give me the magic. All right, let's check to see how much magic we need. We need 20 for that, 17 for that, so we can get to 17. And that, okay, we could use that if we want. So if you right-click the book, I think I do it. There you go. We have now learned a spell. I can heal myself. So you could equip that spell, and whenever you want, you right-click, and it will use up mana, and it will heal you. 
Um, we need 20 magic, so I think I throw... I don't know if I throw anything else in for this level. I kind of feel like, let's level up one more time and I'll get five points. So because we're going to level up one more time, I don't need to throw the extra two in magic. Let's throw them in other things. And let's go down to harder enemies to level two of the dungeon. So yeah, if you only own the Sharer Edition of uh, Diablo, you could keep playing and keep leveling your character up, but you wouldn't get to fight any newer monsters. So I think eventually this would wear on you and you would be motivated to buy the uh, actual game. So I'm trying to see like how I get like 20 experience. Was that all I got? Oh God, it's gonna take forever to level up. Um, that's okay though, I'm in it for the long haul, right? Kill these weird monsters. Now we're gonna see some different things this time around than we saw the first time. Again, because the levels are procedurally generated, there's even like different encounters that, that you find, uh, which I think is actually pretty cool. So even in the retail version of Diablo, after you've played through once, you're not done with the game. You need to play through again and again and again on an endless treadmill, treadmill of looking for loot and finding monsters. Um, I mean, Diablo, by the way, ooh, Scroll of Lightning. We're totally going to try that out, by the way. Scroll of Lightning. Let's just try it right now, I think. I think that's my thinking. I'm sort of like, yeah, so what does this do? Zoop. Man. I, I mean, that, that looks cool. That looks cool. Even even these days. In, 90, in 96, I was like, oh, man, so cool. I wish I had a staff of lightning. Um, looks like there's some books in there. Let's go get some books. This game, again, it's teaching you to read. You know, it's like you got to read the classics, man. If you want to learn how to shoot fireballs out of your out of your hand, you got to learn how to read, my friend. And you have to learn how to read in like two seconds. The guy clicks on a book and he knows everything in it. Um, oh, a bunch of skeletons guarding the book. All right, I'm just going to do this. And if any of you get killed, it's your own fault. There we go. I like how I like how like everything falls from the sky. Like when you kill an enemy, gold falls from the sky, and it's like gold. It's like it's raining money, man. Do scroll town portal. Those are really useful. Always have a hand of those, uh, a handful of those. Um, you know what? Another interesting uh, influence uh, on Diablo here was uh, the Legend of Zelda. Uh, the creator, the the people who developed Diablo said that, you know, like one of the things they were trying to do was moving to like real time was to get away from like the, the sort of slow paced uh, RPGs and get to sort of more action adventure stuff. So they were inspired by Diablo. They were also inspired by a number of roguelikes. So if you don't know what a roguelike is, there's an old uh, game. I'm equipping my heal uh, spell here, by the way. But there's an old, old game, one of the earliest computer games called Rogue which was basically just a procedurally generated endless game of D&D &D that you could play where like monsters and items were randomly generated and you could just go in and play to your heart's content. And I mean, doesn't that sound like Diablo? Diablo is basically rogue. What, what's kind of interesting is like, um, I mean, I don't want to like belittle the achievement that the developers of Diablo have here, but uh, oh, and there I go healing myself using my magic. But really, this is like an old idea. You know, Diablo is not actually a new concept. Um, I mean, the polish on it is terrific, and the user interface is so clean. So much, and they simplified a lot. They've taken a lot out of Rogue, uh, which in a way has made the game better because it's sort of uh, made it purer. I I'm lost here for a second. I'm looking for the next door. It's up and to the left. Didn't even see it when I was up here before. Um, but yeah, it, you know, it's interesting. I I've said this about Blizzard before, but they don't necessarily create new genres because like warcraft that was just a ripoff of dune 2 you know um hearthstone's a ripoff of magic the gathering world of warcraft is a ripoff of uh, everquest you know like they're they ha i don't think have ever really invented a genre but what blizzard excels at is taking a genre stripping away all the stuff that's not good and purifying it down into like its purest and most fun essence and you know, that's fine. I, I, I'm not I'm not saying that Blizzard, you know, they're, you know, they suck because they've never invented a genre. I mean, inventing a genre is hard, first of all. But, uh, but yeah, like, uh, like, like, I don't know. It's like Blizzard's MO. They're really good at harnessing, figuring out what makes things fun and making things fun and polished. So uh, I think the same is true of Diablo, you know. Uh, I really like Diablo. I played a ton of it back in the day. Uh, shareware version and full version. I, again, I, I do own the game. Again, it, my CD is somewhere in a box. I just have no idea where. Um, you know what I'm kind of curious about, though? If I did find the CD, 
and I popped it into this computer, I wonder if this shareware version would now let me play the whole game. Oh, that's so cool. Because I just downloaded this shareware version off the internet. It's an ISO. I'm actually playing this game in a virtual machine, a Windows 2000 virtual box, uh, which basically lets you run a computer within your computer. So my computer is Windows 10, but this is a Windows 2000 machine that I'm running on my computer. It's complicated if you don't know what a virtual box is. But now I'm curious. Now I kind of want to find my Diablo CD. God, I have no idea where it is, though. Checking my stats, trying to see just how far away I am from leveling up. I am a little ways away. So uh, why, don't we, uh, why don't we skip ahead here after I've slaughtered a few more of these monsters and we can uh, see what uh, what's the new spell I'm trying to learn. It's uh, like lightning or something. Let's see what, what that entails. Uh, I realized, by the way, that uh, I need to repair some of my items, so... Go ahead and take care of that. Clink these things up to full health. I like how the the warrior has the ability to uh, repair things. It's quite handy, actually. Um, I think the rogue has the ability to disarm traps, and the wizard has the sorcerer has the power to recharge staffs. So those magical staffs that I had. Um, oh God! How dare you hit me, buddy? All right, we decided to try out a club here because why not? And forget about the staff. So just in the interest of trying different things, let's try a club and like let's hammer these guys. Take my staff of fireball. I don't know why I'm still clinging to this stuff. Equip my my shield here. Um, I guess I think ah who knows you might need to throw a fireball before the video's done. Might as well not throw it away. It's not like I've seen ton of a ton of staves that have uh, that can just shoot fire or lightning or whatever. I'm getting real close. Uh, here's the stairs. I definitely cannot go down there, sadly. Not a chance. I would love to. I, You know what? It's cool that they let you play two levels and whatever. I kind of wish they let you play to one boss. I feel like that would have been a natural endpoint for the shareware edition. But whatever. The fact that you could even do this for free is pretty cool. The shareware model is really like a relic of the past. I feel like very few companies are interested in like giving you free access to their game anymore. But like... I remember, weren't there studies back in the day showing that, like, demos actually decreased piracy and increased ownership? Because a lot of times when people pirate a game, they're just not sure if they want to actually pony up the cash for it, so they pirate it, and they're like, yeah, this is pretty good, but now I own it, so why would I pay for it? Whereas if there's a legal free way of getting the game, people would just download the shareware edition, play the first half hour or hour of the game, and be like, wow, this is actually really fun, I'm gonna buy the game, you know, like... I'm pretty sure demos and shareware just increase sales, but like companies don't want to do it anymore. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe they did a bunch of studies in like the early 2000s and they're like, we're losing billions by giving our game. The first hour of our game is what most people want to play. We're just giving that away, you know, who knows? But I really wish this sort of shareware model of games would come back. But everything nowadays is just Steam and, you know, these like online platforms of, uh, you know, digital distribution and stuff so i don't know it's it's the way things are but back in my day you'd buy a 3.5 inch floppy from the local convenience store and it would have a shareware edition of commander keen and you'd play it with your friends then you'd all te team up and put your allowances together to buy the full version of the game and then of course you'd copy it amongst yourselves stealing the game <laughs> So instead of getting four sales, they're only getting one. But still, you would do it. You would buy a copy of the game. Nowadays, I don't know. I don't even know how kids play games nowadays. Too I'm so out of touch. Head. Anyway, another axe looks just like my other one, so forget it. Kill that guy. How dare you sneak up on me while I'm evaluating my inventory, you little grunt. Um, I like the mace, by the way. I'm pretty sure it's a crappy. Ooh, look at that. Fire. See, I told you guys there was different stuff you can discover here. Um, another bow and arrow. We've already seen that. Yes, we leveled. I'm just going to slaughter these guys so they don't come stab me in my back. Uh, actually, I guess I just full-on upgrade the magic. I'm not even worried about that one guy I left there. Blah, get away from me. All right, so now we have Holy Bolt. It is a spell that we have learned. All right, let's uh, go investigate this fire. See what we got going on here. Oh, a couple of goblins worshiping the fire, eh? Not on my watch club them to death and you can't really i don't know what this is supposed to be this fire you can't really interact with it it doesn't really seem to do anything so whatever um and i've i'm leaving the level up by the way in case i encounter an item hey look a treasure room 
that uh, needs more gold or strength or something. Like, you don't have to distribute your points when you get them. Plus, it honestly, it feels very satisfying to me to just see that that little level up icon feels so good because it feels like you've got something to look forward to. It's like a present. So I kind of just want to, like, uh, leave it up. Um, yeah. Oh, and here's my holy bolt! I'm missing! I, every single holy bolt missed! What kind of crap was that? Alright, use some mana. And I missed again! No magical resistance, but these guys are short, so they're hard to hit. So, uh, okay, hold on. Let's try this. Let's just, just kill this guy. I'm not wasting, uh... Not wasting uh, holy bolts on those little guys again. Let's pop into town. Let's heal up real quick. And let's come back with some holy bolting. Actually, I don't think I ever go back for holy bolting. So you saw the holy bolt. Whatever, there it is. Um, Diablo is one of the games in the book. A thousand one video games you must play before you die. I thought it would be a great game to play on Halloween itself. Because it is, you know, Satan in Spanish. It is... A halloween -y video game, a halloween -y treat. We had skeletons, we had goblins, we had monsters, bats. We have this sinister music, this awesome uh, devilish music. Uh, I think this game is great, by the way. And I was hoping the Shareware Edition would show off a little bit more of what this game has to offer. But since it did not, let me just give you guys a hot little treat here that I curated off the internet. Demons, skeleton and kings, monsters, explosions! It is intense and awesome. There's so much to explore that is not in the shareware edition. There's so much more game here. I give it the Gaming J stamp of approval, frankly. So yes, Diablo, I think wholeheartedly, is a game that you must play before you die uh, if you have not played it. it. It's just a classic. It's up there like Rogue. I know the original does not have as many features as the sequels, but to be totally honest, it holds up. It's sort of this very relaxing, casual RPG in a weird way. You can kind of zone out, put on some music. It's very repetitive, but good. So, ooh, look, a library! A library! <sighs> Um, if you have not played Diablo before, I 100% recommend it. I, in fact, think that this game might be a fun game for me to stream one day um, and, like, do the whole game. Again, we just played the Shareware Edition today. Um, also, I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, look at the Shareware Edition. I don't know how many videos out there exist of anyone playing the Shareware Edition, so hopefully this was something a little different for you. So yeah, I wish you guys a happy Halloween. I hope you all have fun today. Whatever you're doing, whether you do celebrate it or not. Um, I think I just learned a new spell, which is Fireball. Which means I can cast Fireballs at will on this guy. It's just like the staff. Oh, there we go. You can actually hit those guys with Fireballs. I guess they're just harder to hit. Um, but yes, maybe one day I'll play the full game uh, on a stream. But if you have not tried it before, Diablo is a great series. Definitely worth trying. Um, and it's not very difficult. Um, and it's easy to kind of get sucked in. Oh, come on. Oh, come on. What am I hitting? The wall? I have no more mana. I can't fireball these guys. You jerks. Hey, there was a skeleton in that barrel. Come here. Oh, my God. They're actually killing me. There we go. We got them. Um, yeah. So what do you guys think of Diablo? Is it a game that you grew up playing? Do you have fond memories of it? Uh, have you tried it and it's just not for you? Whatever your thoughts on the game, let me know in the comments down below. And do you have any fun Halloween plans? Let me know that, too. Always uh, appropriate on uh, October 31st to hear about, you know, dressing up in costumes or whatever, handing out candy, watching the kitties, all that fun stuff. Until next time, my friends, you all take care of yourselves, and uh, we'll see you soon. Peace. Hey, by the way, want to sign up for the internet? If so, Blizzard's got your back. Earthlink AT&T? Hello, I'd like to sign up for the internet. Diablo sent me. How random. Monsters!